Well, hey there, and welcome to The Bridge Online. My name is Chris. Hey, and my name is Jeremy. We're both pastors here at The Bridge, and we are super glad that you're here with us again this week for Bridge Online. Listen, we are in week three of our new series called Better by Pastor Scott. And let me tell you, last week was amazing. It was all about being ready for God's blessings by sowing what we need to sow now so that we're ready when the rain comes. We know that these days are difficult, but man, it was such an encouraging message last week for me personally to be taking the time now to sow so that God can bless us in the future. Listen, if you missed last week, you can watch it online, bridgechurches.ca forward slash on demand. Just look for the series better and look for week two and you'll be able to catch up. It was a great message and I can't wait to see what Scott has prepared for us today. Mm -hmm. you no, know, as always, we're gonna kick things off with some music. We're gonna go over to the band and they're gonna sing a song called Great Things. And I know that seems a little strange these days. There's not a lot of great things necessarily going on. If you're gonna put a list together of all the great things going on in your life, it may seem like a very short list. But I'm gonna really encourage you now to, to think about all the great things going on in your life because quite frankly, when things are negative around us and we've got a lot of other things going on, and it seems less than perfect, sometimes we can actually miss all that God's doing. So I'm really encourage you to, during this first song to stop and think and maybe even praying about what God is doing in your life. Amen, Chris. Well, off over to the bed. Great. 
amen. What a great way to start the morning. You know, it's great to be back in the building recording the content from here. I've kind of missed these yeah. halls. It's been all the way. It's great to see you hey, face to face. Good to see you too, six feet away. Of course, of course. Made, measured, made sure. Yeah. Uh, but it's weird to be honest to be back in yeah. here and it's it's pretty empty and it seems a little weird to roam these halls with so very few people in the building. And as much as we'd love to just kind of throw open the doors and have things back to the way they were before, we just can't. No. And that's why, honestly, I'm so excited about this event on the yeah. 4th. I cannot wait for it. And we've had a little bit of fun for the last few yeah. weeks with uh, the dinosaur, uh, but we want to take a minute and just kind of focus and <laughs> explain a little bit about the event. So before we talk about what the event looks like, Jeremy, can you just tell us kind of what the event is all about and why do we want to do it in the first place? Yeah, absolutely. Listen, we've been saying all along that life is better together. And I know for myself and, and, and Chris has talked about it as well, we long for community. We wish that we could be back in this building. We wish we could shake your hands and give out the hugs. And we miss that. And we wanted to provide an opportunity for people to connect given the, the circumstances of our day. And so I guess the biggest reason why we want to have this event is so that we can, can invite people to the church property. We can see people not through a screen um, and, and that we can do it all socially distanced. Listen, we're going to get into a little bit of the details today, but we want, we want to assure you that we are taking every precaution and following all the guidelines to make sure that this is a safe event so that you can connect in confidence. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit, what do people expect at this event? Yeah, absolutely. So listen, when you roll up to the church property, uh, there's going to be someone greeting you even before you get into the parking lot. And they're going to just greet you, ask you a few questions, and then they're going to direct you on to the next step, which is shocking. It's parking. Um, but you're going to wait in your car and then one of our awesome volunteers are going to come and they're actually going to escort you or guide you or I don't know, however you want to say it, to an area that's that we're setting up just in the field right beside our church. That's going to be a, a fun event. And we get some songs, some worship together. We yeah. haven't done that in a little bit of while, a little oh, while. No. Been over the screen, which has been good, and I'm yeah. glad we're able to do it, yeah. but a little bit different. Um, then we're gonna have some games. I think there's some prizes involved yeah, as well. Definitely prizes. The dinos are gonna be the back. The dinosaurs are gonna be back. There's yeah. gonna be there's yeah. a purpose for them, I think, this there time. There is a purpose okay. for the dinosaurs. I know some of you might have been a little confused about that yes. uh, over the past two weeks, but they'll be back and it's gonna be a great time. So yeah, we wanna have some fun together. We yeah. haven't really done that. We've tried to do that online, but yeah. it's not quite the same. So we wanna have some fun together and in community. So I'm looking forward to this event. You talked a lot about, or alluded a little bit to the fact that we're gonna be socially distanced, yeah. following the guidelines. Can you just explain that a little bit more? What does that look like? Yeah, well, absolutely. So when we talk about areas, what we what we decided to do was we are actually gonna paint some blocks uh, right on the, on the field, right on the grass, all uh, appropriately distant, six feet, two meters, um, and so that you're, you can be confident in knowing that the spacing is good. We have our uh, student ministries pastor, Tyler Veltman, who is extremely detail-oriented. He's good for this. He's good oh, man, for this. he is like one of the most detail-oriented people I have ever met. So he's planning that part of the, the event. And we're, you're going to be, when you register, you're going to be uh, with your group or with your bubble, or your family. Listen, and we want to do a quick shout out to all of you who are registering uh, as individuals. Oh, sure. You are not going to be left out. You will have your own little block and you will be distanced. Um, but one of the things that we are doing is we're going to divide all the blocks up into neighborhoods. And there's going to be four neighborhoods. And you're going to have an opportunity to interact with your neighborhood, connect, compete against the other neighborhoods all socially distanced yeah. and we have all our volunteers wearing masks absolutely and uh yeah it's just gonna be a great event but again we want to be very clear yeah. that we are going above and beyond and making sure you can feel safe in coming if you go to the grocery store or go to the mall yeah. go to the restaurant we want you to feel comfortable to come here for this event we are going to go above and beyond to make sure we are following all the the uh yeah. the rules but it's still gonna be fun and interactive and we can still have some great time together, right? Yeah, listen, we know that these are uncertain times and the news seems like every day it's populated with uh, coronavirus, with COVID-19 and, and, and we know how quickly things change. I mean, just today, the numbers spike. We want you to know that we are planning this event in consultation with the city of Ottawa. I've been going back and forth in emails uh, and if, if the situation changes, we'll, we'll keep you up to date on what's happening and we'll make decisions you know, accordingly. Absolutely. Well, I say I'm excited for this event. Yes, I absolutely cannot wait. I'm so thankful for all of our volunteers. Yep. We're going to make this happen. As Even though it's a smaller event than we usually do, we still can't run it just on staff. No. And we have volunteers who give up their time and of their talents uh, to make this event happen. So big shout out and thank you to them. Um, but a big thank you to you. If you give week after week uh, financially, 
to the bridge. You help make events like this happen. So big thank you to you. Uh, if you'd be interested in helping support us financially and being a part of the mission and the vision of the bridges of the bridge, there are four easy ways to give. The first is you can mail a check to the church and we'll make sure we have someone pick that up. Second, you can go to our website at bridgechurches.ca slash give. Third, you can use the Church Center app, but again, that's my favorite app. I think it's the easiest. Yeah, absolutely. And then the last is you can go to, uh, you can text to give at 84321, and we'd love to have uh, you give that way. And again, a big thank you to you if you give. Jeremy, before we go back to them, would you want to pray for us? Yeah, absolutely, Chris. Hey, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to be here. We know that these are ridiculously challenging times. Uh, every day we see numbers, we, we hear about you know second waves, and Lord, it is so easy to get caught up in the headlines. It is so easy to get caught up in the scroll and our social media feeds, to be overwhelmed by tension and stress and, and bad news and the unknown. But Lord, we thank you so much that none of this is a surprise to you, that you are a God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever and we can have confidence in you. And, and so I just pray for each person watching this. Lord, I may not know everybody who is tuning in this morning, um, but you do. You know their names, you know their fears, you know their hopes, their dreams, the challenges they're facing, the burdens they're carrying. Lord, you know it all. And so I pray this morning that, that you would move in their lives, whether they are you know, longtime church attenders, uh, Christ followers, or this, this is their first time, I pray that you would meet them where they are in a very powerful and real way, and that you would share with them the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. It's, it's, it's in his name we pray. Amen. Well, and before we send it back to the band, listen, if you want to register for this event, block, uh, block party, go to bridgechurches.ca uh, forward slash events. You'll find it there and register yourself and your, your bubble or your family. Listen, we're going to hand it off to the band now and they're going to sing a song for us now. It's all about how at times it can seem a little bit crazy or weird to follow God. You know, an invisible God that we That's can't true. see. But listen... God is with you. And, and the message in this song is that he is with, with you and he is faithful through it all. Over to the band. Oh yeah, some people think you're distant. Just some words on a page. That you're nothing more than fables handed down along the way. But I've seen you part the waters But no one else could pull me from the deep It's who you are to me Some people think you just live In cathedrals made of stone But I know you live inside my heart I know that it's your home And I've seen you in the sunset And in the eyes of a stranger on the street It's who you are to me You're Love's open door When I'm empty You fill me with hunger for more Of your mercy, your goodness Lord, you're the air that I breathe It's who you are to me Who you are to me Sometimes I have my doubts Show that everybody does And I wonder when I stumble Am I still worthy of your love? But I know that I get stronger When I'm talking to you down on my knees You're everything I need You're amazing, faithful Love's open door When I'm empty You fill me with hunger for more Of your mercy, your goodness Lord, you're the air that I breathe It's who you are to me
You're amazing, faithful, love's open door When I'm empty, you fill me with hunger for more Of your mercy, your goodness, Lord, you're the Well, for the last few weeks, we've been in this series called Better. And if you're joining us for the first time today, or maybe the first time in a long time, we're so glad that you're here. Or maybe you're watching later on demand, or you found us on YouTube. It's so great to be able to connect with you wherever you are and whatever you're wearing. I mean, maybe you're still in your pajamas, sipping on some coffee, and you're still half asleep. Or maybe to you, you're a morning person, and to you, the day is half over. Or maybe for you, it's another day of the week entirely. Well, whoever you are, wherever you are, and whatever it is you're wearing, we are so thankful to be able to connect with you this way. And I just want to ask you a simple question as we launch into our time together today. And the question is simply this, can you define your better? Can you define your better? Because as we said for the last few weeks, you're going to have to scale the series to fit your story. This is not a one-size-fits-all kind of series because better for one person is different than better for another. It depends on what you value. It depends on how you define better. It depends on what the purpose of God is in your life. In other words, better means different things to different people. Better to you may mean to be in a better place relationally. Maybe better to you means to be in a relationship. Better to you may mean to be in a better place in your marriage or in your relationship with your kids. Better may mean to be, uh, have a better year in school or to be in a better year in your career. Better may mean to be in a better place physically or financially. Better to you may mean to be in a better place emotionally, mentally, or spiritually. Better means different things to different people. But again, I want to ask you the question, can you define your better? Because again, as we said for the last few weeks, we are going to better. Now, I know it might not look like that right now. It certainly probably doesn't feel like that right now. In fact, you might be asking yourself, Scott, are, are you like clueless? I mean, have you completely lost it? Are you naive? Are you tone deaf, Scott? I mean, do you see what's happening in our world right now? I mean, Scott, you should be doing a series about the end times, right? Not better. You should be talking about the apocalypse, not better, because Scott, things are getting worse, not better. And I get that. Believe me, I get that. So if you're thinking that, wondering that, if you're asking that, I want you to know you're not alone. The Hebrew people felt the same way that you may be feeling right now because to them, better was the promise of the promised land. And like you, everything that they knew, their entire way of life was behind them. And they had someone in their ear telling them that they were going to better. And they believed them. Well, at least at first they did because things didn't get better for them. In fact, they actually got worse. In fact, they wandered and wondered in a desert for 40 years. Not seven months, not even seven years. For 40 years, they wandered in a desert. And you see, better sounds great. Better sounds better until you actually have to take a step towards it and you have to leave everything that you know. And when you take a step towards better, the gap, the distance, the time between now and then, well, that can be brutal, right? I mean, these last number of months have been brutal for us, and those four years were brutal for them. 
And so for the last few weeks, we've been looking at a part of their history as you and I continue to write our own. And we've been looking specifically into the book of Leviticus, which is a book in the Old Testament. And in Leviticus chapter 26, we find Moses as a leader in an incredibly difficult position. He's just led, miraculously led, his people out of Egypt, out of captivity, out of bondage and slavery to the Egyptian empire. And instantly, they've become a new nation. They've gone from being slaves to sons. And in Leviticus chapter 26, Moses speaks to the people on behalf of God. And we're going to continue to unpack what God said about their better as you and I continue to go together towards ours. So we're going to pick it up where we've been looking at over the last few weeks in Leviticus 26. And it says, if you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, God said through Moses, I will send rain in its season and the ground will yield its crops and the trees their fruit. Your threshing will continue until grape harvest, and the grape harvest will continue until planting, and you will eat all the food you want and live in safety in your land. I will grant peace in the land, and you will lie down, and no one will make you afraid. I will remove wild beasts from the land, and the sword will not pass through your country. You will pursue your enemies, and they will fall by the sword before you. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand, and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers, and I will keep my covenant with you. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to move it out to make room for the new. And I will put my dwelling place among you, and I will not abhor you. He says, I will not abhor you. And to a group of people, to a group of people who have been enslaved for generations, this sounds better than anything that they've ever experienced in their life. This sounds better than anything that they could have ever dreamt or imagined for themselves. I mean, to a group of people wandering and wondering in a desert, God talks about crops and he talks about blessing. I mean, he goes into incredible detail about his promise. But as we said last week, before he talks about the promise, God, through Moses, speaks to them about the process. And he said it in verse 4. He said, I will send rain in its season. God said, I will send rain in its season. So as we've been saying, we need to get ready for the rain. We need to get ready. We've got to get to work. Which for many of us, let's be honest, isn't really what we want to hear. I mean, if we're honest with one another, we don't even really want to hear about the rain. We don't even really want the rain, right? We want what the rain produces. In other words, what we want is the promise without the process. That's really what we want. We want the promise without the process. We don't have the patience to work on or wait on a harvest, do we? We want what we want, when we want it, and we want it right now. But God is speaking to a people. God is speaking to a culture. God is speaking to an agricultural society that understands this thing is going to take some time. Like sowing seed takes time. It takes effort. It takes patience. It takes intentionality. It takes sacrifice. We, we want the promise without the process, but it requires sacrifice. So if you don't plant in those areas that you want to experience better, God will send the rain as he's promised, but all you'll get is wet because you haven't sowed seed. And so what we've been saying over the last few weeks is that something is going to be required of you. Something is going to be required of you if you're going to walk into the better that God has for you. So, so if I don't plant, if you don't plant in those areas that you want to experience better in your life, we diminish our opportunity to reap a harvest in those areas because we didn't plan and we didn't plant so that there could actually be a harvest. So God will send the rain as he's promised, but if we don't do what we need to do, if you don't do what you need to do in your life, God will send the rain, but there will be nothing there for him to water. And so I want to pick up where we left off last week and ask you again, are you ready for the rain? Are you ready for the rain? Is your life ready for what you're praying for? Come on, is your life ready for what you're praying for? Is your life ready for who you're praying for? Mine wasn't. Mine wasn't. When my wife Lisa and I started dating, I was actually rebuilding my life. We had met 10 years previously in Florida when we both lived there, and though we hit it off when we first met, and even though I wanted to ask her out on a date that first time that I met her, for a variety of reasons, I didn't, and our lives went in two different directions. And 10 years later, my life had fallen apart. 
But thankfully for me, we reconnected and we went on that first date that I wish we had gone on 10 years previously. And I remember sitting across the table from this incredible, hilarious, beautiful woman and I thought, I've been given a second chance and I'm not going to let her or this opportunity get away. I mean, I knew right then and there that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with Lisa. But I wanted to ask Lisa to marry me, not wait. And you see, everything that I owned was in just a few duffel bags. And I was sleeping and living in someone else's uh, basement here in Canada. And I was sleeping on a, on a futon that where my legs hung off the edge. I mean, it was brutal. And I, I knew that I wanted to marry Lisa. But I had to get a real bed first. Yeah, I said it, right? I had to get a real bed, not because of what you think I mean, because, but because that's what she needed and deserved to have. I mean, I needed to get a real bed. I needed to get a job. I needed to get my own place. I needed to get my life on track. I didn't want to ask Lisa to move into somebody else's basement. I didn't want to ask her, hey, do you think your parents would let us live with them? And it's not that other people haven't done those things, and it's not that she wouldn't have been willing to do those things. And it's not that her wonderful parents wouldn't have been gracious enough to do anything they could to help me or to help us. It's not that she wouldn't have done it. It's that doing those things could have robbed us of the happiness we could have had. All because I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for the rain. I wasn't ready for, for this amazing, incredible relationship that God was allowing to flourish in my life. And you see, I had left Egypt. I mean, Egypt was behind me. But I couldn't step into the promised land until not only did I leave Egypt, but until I walked and worked through the desert. And you see, with Egypt behind them, God's people are wandering through a desert and God is speaking to them and leading them to better. And in the meantime, he's promising that he's going to send rain to a people who are wandering in a desert. And see, here's the thing about the desert. The desert is where you detox from who and where you were. The desert in your life is where you detox from who and where you were because you can be free and still think and act like a slave. Because you haven't worked through what you went through. You haven't gotten victory over the things that took you down. And see, in order to get to better, in order for me to get to better, for you to get to better, I have to embrace who I am. I have to embrace what I am and what I'm not. I have to embrace who I am. And see, the problem for many of us, maybe it's the same for you, the problem sometimes for many of us is that we try to get other people to embrace things about us that we haven't embraced ourselves. Many times we try to get other people to convince us of things that we don't even believe ourselves. And that manifests itself in so many different ways in our life. And to you it may mean that you're not really over your ex, even though you really want to be, or even though you'd like to think that you are, but you're not. You're still mad at your ex, and being mad at your ex is still a connection to him. Because even though you might be out of the relationship, you're still tied to him. And as long as you continue to complain about him and fuss about him, it shows that you're still connected to him. And see, the rain is coming. And I've got to get ready for the rain. So that means I've got to deal, I've got to heal, I've got to process, I've got to work through what I need to work through now. So that when the rain comes, I'm actually ready for it. And I've got to be honest, that's difficult to do. It sounds good. It sounds great. But it's difficult to do, and it requires each one of us to have a mindset that's forward. And see, the problem for many of us, maybe for you, if you're anything like I've been in sometimes in my life, the problem for many of us is we don't have a mindset moving forward. We have a mindset that's trapped behind us, right? We're so focused on what happened behind us, and we're focused on what was, not what is or what could be. And our gaze is entirely in the rearview mirror. And instead of looking forward with hope and expectation and, and anticipation and confidence, we're continually looking backward with guilt and shame and regret and despair. And see, here's the thing. Here's the thing for you. And I want you to hear this right now. You can't step into the promised land when you're still shackled to Egypt. You can't step into your promised land, the better that God has for you, when you're still shackled to Egypt. And see, for many of us, the reason we don't experience better is because our gaze is entirely focused on what's behind us. And we continually look at what happened, and we're focused on what happened, and where we went wrong, and how what happened was unfair, and how it was unjust, and how it should never have happened, and how I shouldn't have allowed it to happen. And all of those things may be true. They may be true, but you will never get to better looking backward. 
you will only get to better looking forward. Remember what God said. God said that he would send the rain in its season. He says, I will send the rain. He promised, I will send the rain in its season. And the word will is a future tense. It means that it's in front of you. The rain is coming in front of you. It's ahead of you. It's not behind you. And he said that he would send it in its season. And so seasons speak to cycles. There's a cyclical nature to seasons. And so if the rain is coming, that means that I have to be strong enough to be planting in one area of my life over here and harvesting in another area of my life over here. I can't become so focused with the harvest in this area of my life that I stop preparing and planting in other areas of my life. In other words, better is never behind you. Better is never behind you. The rain is always coming. The seasons are continually changing. You never really arrive at better. So I can't be so one-dimensional in my thinking that I focus on this one area of my life and think once this gets better and once I harvest this area over here, then I'll move on and work on this area of my life. It doesn't work that way. I have to be able to do several things all at the same time. That's what God said. Look at what he said. He said, your threshing, meaning wheat, he's talking about wheat there, your threshing will continue to grape harvest, and the grape harvest will continue until planting. And so if the wheat is coming up over here, and the grapes are going to come up over there, that means I had to have planted wheat and grapes. This isn't a result of putting all my grapes in one basket, right? This isn't a result of saying, oh, I'm going to plant in this area of my life. And once I harvest that area of my life, then I'll go plant in this area of my life and work on this. This is a result. This is a result, the, having wheat and grapes, this is a result of strategic sowing. This is being able to define what it is I want to harvest and then sowing strategically the right seed at the right time so that I can be preparing over here, planting over here, and harvesting over here all at the same time. And so the grapes come up. They didn't just come up. Someone planted them. And the wheat didn't just come up. Someone planted it on purpose. And so the question for me is the same question for you. What are you planting? What are you planting? I mean, how many days of your life have gone by where you haven't planted into your relationships? How many days of your life have gone by where you haven't planted into your career or into your education or into your physical health? How many days have gone by where you haven't planted into your emotional or into your mental health? How many days have gone by where you haven't planted into your retirement or into your faith? See, for many years of my ministry, I spent working uh, in student ministry. They were some of the most fun and rewarding years of my life. I loved, you know, investing my life into the lives of students. It was just a powerful season of my life. And one of the things that I saw, and I grieved it over and over and over again while I was in student ministry, was that so many parents, Christian parents, sowed seed into their kids' sports more than they did their kids' faith. And years later, when their kids made bad decisions or when their life went sideways and they went off the rails, they ran to the church looking for help. And see, they didn't sow seed into their kids' faith, but they wanted to reap a harvest of faith when their kids were in trouble. And it doesn't work like that. And that's why I am so passionate and we as a church are so committed to investing into the lives of the next generation. We want to partner with parents. If you're a parent, we want to partner with you to help you sow seed into the faith of your kids. We can't sow the seed for you, but we want to partner with you as you sow that seed into your kids' faith. That's why we're passionate about children's ministry and we're passionate about student ministry. But it's not just for kids and teens. We want every person of every age to sow seed, not into a belief in God, not into some category of their life where, yeah, I, I, I believe that. We want to help people sow seed into a personal, intimate, vibrant relationship with our Heavenly Father that breathes life and meaning and purpose and value into each and every single day. So that's why we're passionate about, you know, student ministry. That's why we're passionate about kids' ministry. That's why we're passionate about Alpha, which you've heard about. That's why we're passionate about all these things, because we want to partner with you to help you sow seed into your faith, into a relationship with God that breathes meaning and purpose into every single moment of your life. When you're in a season of drought, when it's pouring rain in your life, and everywhere in between. 
And so God is speaking to his people about better. And again, look what he says. He says, your threshing will continue to grape harvest, and the grape harvest will continue unto planting. So again, he's saying wheat and grapes. Better means different things to different people, and it doesn't just mean one thing. Better isn't just one category of your life. There are so many different areas where better can apply to you. Better to you may mean, it may mean career advancement. It may mean relationally. It may mean mentally. Again, it may mean physically, financially. It may be all of these different areas of your life. Whatever it is to you, again, I want to ask you the question, can you define your better? Because if you can't define it, I know you're not sowing into it. And you can't harvest wheat and grapes by planting carrots and apples. I mean, I don't have a green thumb, but I know that. If you're going to reap a harvest of wheat and grapes, that means you have had to have sown those specific seeds. You have to have sown those seeds strategically. So that means you have to have been able to define what it is you want to harvest so that you can sow the right seed. You have to be able to define what it is you want to harvest so you can trace it all the way back and then make sure and ensure that you're sowing the right seed and sowing it strategically so that you can actually reap the harvest you want to reap. And so again, God is speaking to his people, and I want to look at that verse again. He says, your threshing will continue until grape harvest, and the grape harvest will continue until planting. And so we've got threshing and harvesting and planting And I don't know about you, but when I read that, it sounds like a lot of work, right? It sounds like a lot of work, but the first time I read this text, I read it and I'm like, whoa, God is just pouring out this blessing. This sounds incredible. This is so much better than anything that they'd ever imagined, dreamt, or ever experienced in their life. This is incredible. You see the result. But the more you read this text, the more you realize, or hopefully you see, what's required. Instead of just seeing the result on the surface, hopefully as you read it, you see what's required to experience this level of blessing. You see what's required in order to experience this level of better. And what is required is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And that's why I think a lot of people don't experience harvest in their life. It's because it's a lot of work. It's a lot easier to stay stuck in Egypt It's a lot easier to stay stuck where I was. It's a lot easier to stay stuck in what I was or who I was. But climbing up, climbing out, that takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of muscle. Falling is easier. Falling's easy, right? I mean, you you just got to let go. But wherever you let go, you will fall. You let go of the kids, you fall. You let go of your marriage, you fall. You let go of your finances, you fall. You let go of your physical health, you fall. And you might be, hey, look at me, I'm so successful, I built this great business. And it's like, yeah, you did, but you lost your family in the process, right? Sowing seeds strategically requires you to be able to be strong enough that you can be preparing in this area of your life and planting in this area of your life and harvesting in this area of your life all at the same time. And that requires a lot of work a lot of intentionality, a lot of focus and effort and sweat and tears. It requires time. It requires patience and perseverance. And see, we want the glory, right? I mean, we want the perks of success. We want better. But we don't necessarily want to give what's required in order to experience that better. But again, to double down what we've said throughout this entire series, something is going to be required of you. Something is going to be required of you if you're going to walk into the better that God has for you. But when your diligence intersects with God's faithfulness, when you see God water what and how hard you've worked, God said this, this is powerful. He said, you will eat all the food you want. All the food you want. Look at God caring about what you want. Look at God caring about what you want. Your heavenly father cares a great deal about what you want. He cares a great deal about the better that you want to experience in your life. But here's the thing. God is far more interested. God is far more concerned with the process that it takes for you to experience that better than he is about you just experiencing it in and of itself. 
And so you need to do what you need to do to see God do what only God can do. You need to sow seed. You need to define what it is that better is to you. And you need to sow seed strategically so that when God sends the rain, as he promised that he would do, he actually has something in your life to water. And so my hope for you, my hope for you for this series is what it was at the very beginning of this series. My hope is that you will be able to define what better is to you and then discover some things that you need to do so that you can see God do what only God can do. Because to a people wandering and wondering in a desert, God said that I will send rain in its season and he will do the same for you and he will do the same for me because we are going to better. Our best days are not behind us. And I know it may not look like that. I know right now it may not even feel like that. But God promised that he would send rain in its season. And we are going to continue to discover together what that means as we go together to better. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to connect uh, through technology, to be able to open up your word and see how what happened in the Israelite people's lives so many generations ago is still applicable to our lives today. And God, right now, we are wandering in a desert. We're in this gap, in this season where so much is uncertain. And yet, God, we want to hold on to your promise, but we recognize that there is a process involved in us seeing your promise come to fruition in our lives. That, God, we have a responsibility to the better that we each want to experience in our lives. So, God, I pray that you would help us. Help us to be able to define what better is to us so that we can prepare, so that we can work diligently and tirelessly so that when the rain comes, as you've promised you would send it in our lives, that when the rain comes, we are ready and we can see flourish in our lives what you desire to see flourished and what we des desire to see flourished in our lives. Thank you for caring about what we want. Thank you for caring about what better means to us. And thank you for providing rain so that we can experience it in our lives. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next week as we conclude this series, Better. Oh, I searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures the fade Are never enough And you came along And put me back together
if you jumped into chat. Thanks a lot for participating. And listen, it's so important for us to remain connected in this day and age. Some of the challenges that we're facing, I know that I can't do it alone. And, and so there are some opportunities that we have for you to connect throughout the week, uh, get some information as well as interact with people from the church or from the community. Uh, the first way is through the loop. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a loop and we want you to be in it. Simply and it's working. Go, and it's working finally, right? <laughs> it was going to the spam. Chris didn't get it. No. Listen, it wasn't going out weekly. We have some volunteers behind the scenes working hard to make that happen. If you want to be part of the loop, uh, go to bridgechurches.ca, scroll to the bottom, you put your email address in, and there you go. Other way to stay connected in kind of an interactive way is through our Facebook or our Instagram pages. Especially Facebook is a really cool way to interact with people. I mean, was it a couple of weeks ago we had, you know, what's better, uh, cats or dogs, right? Dogs, oh, obviously. No, cats, for sure. This, uh, we'll get into that. But listen, there's some opportunities for us just to have some friendly banter, to be encouraged. There's some inspirational uh, verses that go up there. We're going to start posting more information about the church, perhaps sharing some videos. And one really cool thing that we don't often mention, but it's an opportunity for us who are Christ followers to share invitations to church. Listen, at the bridge, we're all about building irresistible bridges between unchurched people and Jesus. And you are a huge part of that. Every Saturday night or you know somewhere around that, uh, Lisa posts an invite to the church service. We encourage you, take a few moments, like the post and share it. You just never know who might be watching your feet and might come to the church as a result of that. Yeah, wouldn't that be amazing if someone just decided to jump online the next day and come to church just because you have to share it? Absolutely. Inviting someone to church has never really been easier than it is now. One quick announcement for you related to our kids ministry and our, our uh, youth ministry. There are some exciting things happening in the next couple of weeks uh, for both of those ministries. I mean, just because the church is closed doesn't mean the church is stopped. Taking off in a year, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's March break is over. It is, finally. finally <laughs> right? So listen, if you want to find out what's happening in our children's ministry or our youth ministry, simply go to bridgechurches.ca forward slash events and you'll find the information there. You won't be disappointed. Chris? Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was great to have you. Again, as we've done the last few weeks, we're going to have some questions up on the screen. We would love for you to discuss as a family and think through it. Some of the questions to help you kind of take the content that uh, Scott's talking about today and mm -hmm. just process a little bit more throughout yeah. the day and yeah. throughout the week. Um, but we'd love to have you do that. Uh, again, don't forget to go to bridgechurch.ca slash events and sign up for the block party yeah. on October 4th. We would absolutely love to see you there. Well, again, thanks for joining us. Until next time, God bless and have a great week. Yeah, take care. Yeah.